Hello everyone. Welcome to CATIA tutorial. I am Virakesh, Assistant Professor in Department of Mechanical Engineering Kitswarangal. In this video lecture, I am going to explain one important topic that is how to apply the constraints in CATIA V5. In the last semester, I have prepared one uh, video on uh, basic types of constraints. That is, uh, uh, that you can see the uh, the type of constraints in, in uh, insert menu, constraint, constraint creation. Uh, these are the different types of uh, applying const constraint to a given sketch that is dimensional constraint, contact constraint, fixed together constraint, auto constraint. In this video lecture, I am going to explain uh, uh, geometrical constraint. What are the different options are available in uh, geometrical constraint? Let us see, let us discussing about uh, geometrical constraint. Uh, before going to explain geometrical constraint, let us see the what is constraint. Constraints are the logical operations that are performed on the selected element to define its size and location with respect to other elements or reference geometries. Uh, there are two types of constraints in CATIA V5. The constraints in the sketcher workbench are called geometrical constraints. Uh, this type of constraints are used to precisely define the size and position of the sketcher sketched elements with respect to the surroundings. The second one is assembly design constraints. The assembly constraints available in the assembly design workbench uh, that are used to define the precise position of the components in the assembly. In this video lecture, we will uh, discussing about geometrical constraint. What is geometrical constraint? Geometrical constraints are the logical operations performed on the sketched elements to define their size and position with respect to the other elements. These are two methods to apply geometrical constraints. First one is automatic constraints. Second one is manual geometry constraints. While drawing the sketch, some constraints are automatically applied, applied to the sketch. For applying constraints manually, you need to invoke the constraint defin, uh, defined in dialog box. Uh, let us see how to invoke a constraint defined in dialog box. For example, I am choosing uh, this rectangle edge uh, length. You can see here. This is the constraint defined in dialog box. Now I am choosing this option. These are the uh, different options are available in geometrical constraints. First one is uh, distance, uh, length, angle, radius or diameter, semi-major axis, uh, semi-minor axis, symmetry, midpoint, equidistant point, fix, coincidence, concentricity, tangency, parallelism, perpendicular, horizontal, vertical. Uh, let us uh, discussing about each and every uh, geometrical constraint uh, in CATIA V5. Let us see the first one. Distance. How to apply the distance constraint in CATIA V5? Here distance means this constraint is used to apply a distance dimension between any two selected entities. For example, I am choosing these two edges, these two horizontal lines. Now, I am going to invoke the constraint defined in dialog box. You can see here, distance uh, constraint is activated. Now, I am choosing this option. Then click OK. Here, the distance constraint is applied to the selected uh, lines. Let us see the second one. Uh, here I have chosen that one line. In the constant definition dialog box, length is activated. Length means this constant is used to apply a linear dimension to the selected line. Now I am choosing this length. You can see here, uh, this linear dimension is applied to uh, this sketch. Just you can click OK. The next one is angle. For uh, for applying angle constraint, I need to construct two 
inclination line this is the first line this is the second line now i am choosing this both lines now i am going to invoke the constraint defined in dialog box the angle geometrical constraint is activated now i am choosing this option then click ok you can see here angle is applied to the selected lines the angle is 147.171 degree here angle makes this constant is used to apply an angular dimension between any two selected lines here i have selected these two lines so the angle is applied to applied in between these two lines the second next one is radius or diameter for applying radius or diameter geometrical constraint i need uh, i need to draw one circle now i am choosing circle from profile toolbar now i am choosing cir circle now i am going to invoke constraint defined in dialog box now here radius or diameter is activated i am choosing this one you can see here uh, this constraint is used to apply a radius or diameter dimension to the selected circular entity you can also apply this radius or diameter to arcs also then click ok the next one is semi major axis you can apply the semi major or semi minor axis to uh, selected ellipse now i am going to draw one ellipse by using profile toolbar now i am going to invoke constraints defined in dialog box you can see here in the constraint definition dialog box semi major axis semi minor axis are activated now i am choosing semi major axis you can see here this semi major axis length is uh, added to this ellipse semi major axis constraint is used to apply a dimension to the major axis of selected ellipse now i'm going to select semi minor axis semi minor axis means this constraint is used to apply a dimension to the minor axis of the selected ellipse then click okay the next one is symmetry uh, for explaining symmetry option uh, i am going to draw three lines this the uh, first line the second line this is the third line now i am choosing these three lines then i am selecting constraints defined in dialog box you can see here symmetry is activated now i am choosing symmetry we have symmetry means this constraint is used to force the selected entity to become symmetrical about an axis here a line segment can be used as an axis here i have selected three lines in in that lines one is it takes as axis line this is the use of symmetry option the next one is midpoint now i'm choosing this line here you can see here uh, midpoint is not activated okay how to activate midpoint this constraint forces a selected point to be placed on the midpoint of the selected line so for activating midpoint i'm going to choose point i'm going to place point on this line now i'm selecting point and line then activating a constant defi definition dialog box now i'm choosing midpoint then click okay you can see here this both uh, both lengths are equal this constant forces a selected point to be placed on the midpoint of the selected line the next one is equidistance point 
here uh, now i'm choosing this line invoking uh, constant definition dialog box this equidistant point is not activated for uh, activating this equidistant point now i'm going to choose let us see the uh, use of how to apply the equidistant point this constraint forces a selected point to be placed at an equal distance from any two three selected points for that purpose i am choosing this line this midpoint and also selecting line both end point the first point this is the end point first point end point and midpoint uh, just you can choose one point on that line now i am going to choose uh, invoking uh, constraint defined in dialog box just uh, one point first point end point you can see here first you can uh, you can uh, select uh, one point on that line then you can select uh, uh, both end points of that line now you can choose equidistant point then click ok here this both uh, both distance are equal let us see the one more example taking one line keeping one point on that line here selecting this mid this point and both uh, end points of that line point both end points then choosing constant defined in dialog box now i'm activating equidistant point you can see here this is the equidistant point this constant forces a selected point to be placed at an equal distance from any two pre-selected points let us see the next one fix for example i uh, need to fix this circle here then uh, invoke constant defined in dialog box now i'm choosing fix click ok uh, now you can you can increase or decrease the size this is not possible because we are applying fix this constraint is used to fix a selected entity in terms of its position with respect to with respect to the coordinate system of the current sketch we cannot move we can we cannot uh, uh, <coughs> cannot move its position with respect to coordinate system of the current sketch let us see the next one coincidence uh, for that purpose i am going to select uh, uh, these two lines invoking constant defined dialog box you can see here coincidence is uh, highlighted coincidence means this constant is used to make two points two lines a point and a line or a point and a curve coincident now here i have selected two lines now i am choosing coincidence you can see here both two lines are coincidence for example uh, i am choosing uh, this point and this line now i am going to choose coincident line and point already uh, this both are in coincident so i am choosing uh, one more option uh, point and point i am choosing these two option point and point coincident you can see here both are coincident then click ok this is the procedure to applying coincident let us see the next one concentricity uh, for that purpose, I am choosing uh, these two circle and ellipse. You can see here, concentricity is highlighted. Uh, concentricity means 
this constraint is used to make two circles two arcs an arc and a circle a point and a circle or a point and an arc concentric now i'm choosing concentricity you can see here both uh, uh, this do different sketches uh, having uh, one center point that is the meaning of concentricity in previous case a uh, circle having one center point and uh, ellipse having one center point when you are choosing concentricity uh, both center points are together both uh, sketches having one single center point then click okay next uh, next one is tangency for that purpose i am choosing this uh, line and circle now invoking constraint define a dialog box you can see a tangency is highlighted now i am choosing this one tangency means this constraint is used to force the selected line segment or curve to become tangent to another curve then click okay here this line is tangent to this circle uh, next one is parallelism Uh, for that purpose, I am choosing uh, these two lines. Already, these two lines are parallel. Let us uh, verify that uh, lines are parallel or not. Now, I am invoking constraint define or define a dialog box. You can see a parallelism is highlighted. Parallelism means uh, this constraint is used to force any two selected line segment to become parallel to each other. The selected line segment can be axis as well. now i am choosing parallelism you can see here this symbol indicate this symbol means parallelism the next one is perpendicular let us uh, check uh, these two lines are perpendicular or not now i am choosing this line and this line uh, you can see here perpendicular is highlighted perpendicular means uh, this constraint is used to force any two selected line segments to become perpendicular to each other the selected line segments can be axis as well now i am choosing this option you can see here this symbol indicates perpendicular of these two lines then click okay uh, the let us see the last two option that is horizontal or vertical you can see here for this sketch h indicates horizontal constraint this v indicates vertical constraint now i am choosing this line you can see here already vertical uh, constraint apply to that sketch uh, vertical means the vertical constraint forces the selected line segment to become vertical okay now i'm choosing this one here horizontal is highlighted that means uh, the horizontal constraint forces the selected line segment to become horizontal then click okay Uh, this is the uh, brief uh, discussion about uh, uh, geometrical constraints in CAD or V5. I hope this is very clear to you. Then, in next uh, uh, next part, we will discussing about assembly constraint. In the previous first uh, part one, uh, we were discussed about uh, uh, basic basic types of constraints like. Uh, uh, constraint create uh, dimensional constraint contact constraint fixed together auto constraint and also we discussed about to edit uh, multi constraint in this today lecture we discussed about to geometrical constraint in the coming lecture that means part 3 we will discussing about to assembly constraint how to apply the assembly constraint for the uh, 3d pictures i hope this is very clear to everyone Thank you for watching please do like and subscribe my channel for more updates